Hello and welcome to the new episode of the Network in Cisco Packet Tracer Tutorials for Beginner. Siavash is here and in today's tutorial we continue our routing topic and start with our first dynamic routing protocol which is RIP, also known as Router Information Protocol. If you remember in our previous topology we have uh, two router, router 0 and router 1, which are connected through the WAN 1, 172.16.00.30. And we have a 2 LAN 1 and LAN 2 connected to the router 0 and LAN 3 and LAN 4 which are connected to the router 1. So before we start, let's try some things from the PC 0 to the PC 2 and PC 3. Okay, we go to the desktop, command line, okay, IP config, 192.168.10.10 and try to ping 192.168. Let's start with the 30.10, which is the PC2. Okay, first thing lost is usually lost, and we have our reply back from the other side. Let's try from 40 also. We can ping 192.168.40.10, and it's obvious we can ping the LAN, which is connected to the same router, which is our friend here in 20 segment. Okay, here we go. So we have a full connectivity from the PC1, C0 to PC1 and also travels through the WAN link and reach to the PC2 and PC3. So let's take a look at the router 0, enable the router, show IP route. This is a command shows that what routing we have. If you remember, we set static default route which is all the routes go through the van link 172.16.0.2 which is IP address on the other side of the router which is this 2 and let's try check the router 1 as well enable the router show IP route here we go we have another static default route to the other side of the van link 0.0.0.0 via 172.16.0.1 Okay, now it's time to change our static route to the dynamic routing protocol. As you may realize, it's clearly that dynamic, uh, your routers will dynamically learn about the network that need to be advertised in uh, routing protocol. And uh, so you no need to manually uh, define all the network within your router. Let's start with the router zero. Go to global config. So first of all, remove the static IP now, uh, static routing. So no IP route 0000000, 000, press enter. So do show IP route. As you can see here, we don't have our static route anymore. It's time to set up the router. So we go to router rip, question mark. As you can see, nothing is here. So we are in a router rip configuration mode. So first of all, version 2 is very important because uh, originally the, the RIP is invented a long time ago, which is not really suitable for modern networks today. So we need to use a uh, version 2. There are some technical information regarding to the RIP. Uh, technically, uh, the original RIP broadcasts all the router, uh, which knows about uh, every 30 seconds and uh, regardless of the status of the any router in the networks which means that if one of the network connected to the router is goes down the router is not triggered update but they fix this issue and in version 2 you have a triggered update when anything changes happen in your network the router automatically inform the rest um, and as mentioned they using the broadcast but now uh, updates are uh, using the multicast address of 224.009 instead of the broadcast, which is to help you to save the traffic over the network. There are other, a lot of other you know, uh, upgraded in version 2. And what most important things is uh, they add the triggered update. They use a multicast. And if you have a defined network, you can use the unicast to send the tra uh, network update to the neighbors. And finally, they add some uh, authentication between the router. So we use a uh, version 2 and it's a very recommended we use a no auto summary because we want to make sure that uh, we uh, don't auto summarize our network. So and we it's time to define our network. 
by using the network command, I use the question mark. Okay, 192.168.10.0 is connected to our network. You see, these are we have three networks: LAN one, LAN two, and WAN one. So we need to advertise all these uh, networks through the RIP. So we go back here. This is uh, you will see in uh, uh, next videos that how we config the OSPF and EIGRP. We don't have any subnet mask, no need to worry. So we just put network 10, network 20 for LAN 2, and finally for our band link 172.16.0.0. Okay, here we go. Yes. Okay, so show IP route. So for sake of adding more adventures, I go to the PC0 and run the continuous ping to our 40 network on a PC free and run the destination on reachable as you can see we don't have any communication yet go to the router one let's put these two side by side if possible let me try and here we go we have a router one it's a good idea you can see the continuous ping in on one side and you can see the configuration on the router one in the other side go to global configuration mode no ip route 000 000 so we remove the ip stick route to show ip route so we don't have any all the connected connection only go to the router rip version 2 okay no auto summary and finally network 192.168.30.0 and 40.0 and the time we expected to see some things come up 172.16.0.0 and as you can see immediately on the left hand the ping between the PC on the LAN 0 can ping the PC on the LAN 4 from 192.168.10.10 to 192.168.40.10 here is a command for your reference as you can see in the global configuration mode router rip version 2 no other summary and finally we define the network we want to advertise over our network so network command here is advertise the network as well as send the read packets toward to the interfaces which are connected to this so let's take a look at the show IP route here we go now as you can see our router 1 is dynamically land read is here as you can see this is a read Sorry. and we learn 192.168.10 and 192.20.0/24 via 172.16.0.1 which is the other side of the link so if we add any other network on a router 0 we can just add the network command on that and our router uh, 1 will be learn it automatically so as you can see here is a number which is 120 which is called administrative distance is very important uh, if you compare with our previous video and our next video you will see there is a difference between this administrative distance in a nutshell administrative distance is how your routing protocol is accurate so you can just google for administrative distance for a, a different dynamic routing protocol as well as any static routing protocol and as you can see when this number is lower your routing will be much more accurate. So uh, I will explain more about administrative distance on a future video. Let's check our ping is up. Let's break this ping. Let's go back to our router zero and check the IP route on this side. And as you can see, luckily we have a side by side. When we remove the IP static route, we only have connected. And here we learn dynamically via RIP about 192.168.30.0/24 and 192.168.40.0/24 administrative distance belong to the rip is 120 and we learn those dynamic ip address i mean dynamic network via 172.16.0.2 which is other side of the van link and through the interface of 300/3.0 so this was a short video relating to the RIP. Uh, I hope is, this is informative for you. We will expand our topology with the RIP and other dynamic uh, uh, 
routing protocol in the future. If you find this video useful, please subscribe and share among your friends. Thank you.